to another edition of Players in the New School. Today I have three of some of the main, most amazing photographers, content creators in the W right now. I have Jimmy Williams and Meredith Mikau, based out of the you know California area. Um, I also have Chris Hindo, based out of Dallas, and along with myself, Jasmine Baker. Thank you all for being on today. Great, right, great, glad to be here. What is keeping you busy during these quarantine days? Uh, I can go, I guess. Um, so I'm still working. Um, photography is like not my main thing. I kind of just do it as a hobby. Uh, working from home, a lot of walks, taking photos outside, doing whatever I can to like stay creative. Um, but yeah, it's keeping me kind of busy. Chris, what about you? Oh, man, for me, like, yeah, same thing, work from home, but luckily, like, got some good contacts, and I've been staying consistent about keeping my interviews up. Like I said, interview a lot of WNBA, NBA, sports, entertainment people. Um, try to interview them, talk lifestyle, you know, keep things off their mind, a lot of stuff going on, but, yeah, that's what I've been doing, but, like, still working. So, like, yeah, try to be consistent in a different way since I can't be in the arena. This is my arena right now, so, yeah, yeah, still going. Eugenie? Um, honestly, I haven't been doing a lot. I've actually just taken this time to kind of press the reset button, relax and chill. Like creatively, the only thing I've focused on really is my uh, flip platform that I have on Instagram. Just really trying to give more exposure to basketball photographers and the work and having a lot of conversations with other photographers and creators. So. That's really where I've been focused on in the last month or so. Nice, nice. And, you know, when you talk about being creative, I've noticed that the three of you, one of the main reasons why I picked the three of you is because, A, my relationship to some of you uh, compared to others, but also because I respect um, what each of you brings to the table as far as um, the lens that you show us in terms of seeing the W so differently compared to what we saw maybe five, 10 years ago. Can you just kind of talk about um, the process of allowing us to see what inspires you to put out the type of content that you do as far as with the W is concerned um, and allows us to see something different that we probably didn't see maybe a decade ago? Um, Meredith, I'm gonna let you go first. Um, yeah, so I, started shooting WNBA like two I think a year ago now so not that long um I kind of I started um shooting the first game I shot was a storm game last year um and I kind of had this idea I feel like uh we were talking about it earlier but like WNBA players aren't marketed the same way as NBA players and they're a lot of untapped personalities in the W that are just like so interesting and they all have these like side passions and I kind of uh, kind of wanted to show through like a different lens started kind of like a photo series um, I started with Jordan Canada like following her around um, I'm not as like technically strong as like I'm sure you guys are um, so I kind of look at it through like a lens of trying to tell a story with personalities um, when I'm shooting on the court, I'm trying to shoot more portraits than action because just until, up until recently, I had like a pretty basic lens. But yeah, just trying to showcase personalities more and bring more um, exposure to the league. If that answers your question. Yeah, no, you do an amazing job as far as that goes. And I think a lot of people are um, impressed by seeing that, you know, that almost the human side of it to me especially like you and maria noble i'm not sure if you're familiar with her work but oh yeah, yeah. Gosh, you guys do an amazing job as far as that's concerned um chris go ahead yeah for me it's a simple thing like i've always had a passion for gaming and sneakers so like i always knew that like WNBA players enjoy those things as well i think that's something that is lost in the art of like sneaker culture and just things of that nature um i think honestly you know, for, from a lady's perspective, I think that, like, sneakers are a big deal, and I think it should be displayed. Um, I mean, like, Cheryl Swoops, one of my one of my favorite Nike sneakers of all time, I had to show, I got a picture as a kid, as a young kid, I got the Cheryl Swoops shoe on. Yeah. And I remember back then, I didn't really understand the concept of, hey, this is actually, 
you know, a women's shoe, but like, hey, man, I love the shoe. And yeah, for me, like everything was visual, obviously. I do some photos, I take sneaker photos, but it's always great when I go to the games and like I see players and they look down at my feet and they're like, oh, what are those you got on today? And I'm like, oh man, I like those too. And then just seeing their 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 conversation about that. And then like I said, video games, like it's it's dope that now that I'm able to go on Twitch and see Alicia Gray or see certain like WNBA players gaming, NBA 2K added WNBA 2. I thought that was the greatest thing that they could ever did. Um, like I said, yeah, for me, I just want fans to see, like you said, the other side of the players. They're not just athletes. And I think they're, you know, the, the quote is the more than athletes, I think they are. And I think we should appreciate, you know, I don't call it women's basketball, I call it basketball because I think it's, I don't like to separate the two. So I think they're like, you know, basketball in general, we should appreciate women. Um, there's some dope, dope, dope female hoopers out there, man, that I enjoy. Like I said, and I just think they're like, you know, letting people see the lifestyle side of things has always been great because I think that's the connection. A lot of times people just don't watch what, but guess what? There are some people out there who love shoes, who love video games. And like, I think it's dope that the players, they, they don't get a chance to talk about that as much. And I think that like for them to talk about it, that's always been a big deal for me. So yeah, visually I love doing things like that, letting people see the other side of things because it brings a different fan base. And I think once you get people to see that side of them, it, it changes everything to perspective. So yeah, man, I enjoy like being able to broadcast my my platform with WNBA and I always have been doing it for years and I just think that's a great thing. Now, you're definitely one of the few dudes I've noticed that actually does that. But for me, at the end of the day, you're just one of the few people who does it well in general. You just do a really good job of you know, putting that lifestyle along with the players. Um, and, you know, beyond the W, excuse me, um, <laughs> Made for the W does a, an amazing job with this as well. Um, and speaking of Made for the W, I know, Janine, you worked with them as well. Um, we just talk a little bit about you know, what it is that you do in terms of your bringing your unique lens to the W. Like I was saying before, I think for me, like, obviously, like I said, it's pretty straightforward, the connection and collaboration that I have with um, made for the W. Um, and that's bringing the photography aspect to it. Me and Sam actually went to high school together, which is pretty dope. Okay. Um, but as far as like the W itself, for me, I'm a hooper first. So I play basketball. So for me, that's like what I try to bring to the table when I'm shooting anything is coming at it from the athlete's perspective. And I think a lot of times we look at like the hype culture, we look at the sneakers, the video games, all these different things. But for me, it's like I want to kind of what he said is remove that separation between men and women's basketball. Like it's just basketball. And so when I'm there and I'm, you know, shooting and anything that I do kind of around women's basketball, I kind of just try to tell it that story from like just a hooper mentality because I think when you can do that then fans actually start to appreciate it more um because when you kind of separate it it's like that title woman sometimes makes people kind of shy away from wanting to watch it like when you go like I, I went to a ton of the Sparks games when you're in the arena it's no different than a Lakers game like the fans are there they're supporting this the, the team you know it's like high school kids college kids you know, the teams bring in their players to watch. It's like so the energy in there is crazy, like the DJ and all that. So it's no different than going to an NBA game. The difference is you just have different players. And so I feel like as creatives, as influencers in our own right, we ha we kind of have that responsibility to tell that story. Luckily, we can do it in a creative way because I think that will bring also our fans to it. You know, a lot of times, like he said, you don't have people really in the gym like that, taking pictures or doing video and stuff like that. And I think one of the things that I've wanted the WNBA to do is maybe lessen the ability or I guess make it easier for people to get in the building. Because, you know, a lot of up and coming photographers and, and bloggers and, and writers and stuff like that, they go NBA first. They, they want to get in the door and it's so hard. And it's like with the WNBA, maybe they can make it a little less hard. So we get that attraction. You get people who are starting out who want to come in. And even though you want to get some of those more, um, I guess, established creatives in the building, it, it's cool to get that free marketing for people who are just tr trying to start out, you know what I mean? And they want to shoot and it's like, hey, bring them in um, so that they can put eyes on the WNBA right now, there's just not enough eyes from different levels and different platforms. Like we saw with the draft, putting it on ESPN, 
was like a huge, huge thing. Mm -hmm. So now it's like, how can we find just different creative ways to get maybe some of that free marketing up? In the past, people weren't willing to put their money into, you know, let's get other creatives in the building to be able to shoot, see that it's really no different than any other game interact with the players and build relationships so that we can continue like driving you know the w okay that's interesting like what you're saying because we were talking about earlier how like we don't want it to be like a stepping stone to the nba but i think that like if you get photographers that are established in the nba world to try shooting a wnba game they can see like how easy it is to access like the top players like i've met like Mm -hmm. a lot of players and built relationships with like Liz Cambage like she's basically like superstar status on the level of like in terms of popularity like LeBron or KD are like top in the league and she could not yeah. be nicer and like uh, mm -hmm. more down to earth and like you have access if you build relationships that like you wouldn't get in the NBA and if you if these like NBA photographers tried it out they'd be blown away by how easy it is to build relationships with players because the players are so grateful for the coverage even the top ones and like there's so mm -hmm. much untapped um personalities and stories there that I think like established NBA players there's a way to be in the middle like mm -hmm. you can if we get someone who's an influencer that has a lot of followers like just show them, have them shoot a game. I think they'd be blown away and want to cover it just as much as NBA. Mm -hmm. it have to be yeah. Like you said. Mm -hmm. I definitely and it's something different too, you know. It's not the same stuff over and over again. That's right. honestly why I like shooting it is because shooting women in general is different than shooting men, you know. The speed of the game, the tempo of the game is a little bit different. The reactions are different, to be honest women's basketball is way more exciting and emotional than men's basketball. You get a lot more athleticism, obviously, with the NBA, but with the WNBA, like, you see how much more of a sense of camaraderie the players have with one another. The emotion is different just because we're women in general, but, like, the passion and the love for the game, you actually see it a little bit more than you do on the men's side, so. Yeah, yeah. not to, like, uh, talk so much, but, like, have you guys noticed that in a WNBA game, after, like, every play, the starters will like huddle up together and talk and mm -hmm. talk on the floor. And you barely ever see that in NBA. Like mm -hmm. players, like their relationships on the floor, yeah. they like really care about each other. It's not as much um, isolation and just like people trying to get theirs. Like I love getting the shots of players huddling and like you can see them talking through stuff that you don't see in the NBA. That's, mm -hmm. that's so true. Yeah, no, I know. I definitely... Uh, I know what you're talking about. I love that. I mean, it's what crazy because I see these photos. Um, I noticed that anytime I went to go visit Sterling in the office, I've seen these photos that they have of the team, you know, huddled up together. And I just, you know, it's crazy. I never noticed it until I actually really was sitting in there one day. And I was like, man, that is a really iconic shot. Like just, um, and the thing about it is like a lot of shots have been so iconic. And I think, um, uh, you know, going back, talking about Liz, like, she's had a lot of iconic moments, you know, in terms of photography. Um, and when she was playing in Dallas, I mean, that was, 2018 was a year I will never forget because of her being, you know, just how, like I said, she's very down to earth. Um, she gets this reputation. I think it's so funny because I'm like, that is definitely not the woman I know, but, um, uh, or that we got to know while she was here. Um, and the what one of the, I think a lot of times too we think about the NBA a lot of times in terms of like photo like the photography and those those iconic moments and sometimes we don't necessarily have that on the WNBA side and that's why I'm so grateful that we have now this like um, moment where photographers are really starting to curate. I guess more or less what's going on right now, this moment, this, this, I guess this next era, right, of the league and what the direction that they're going in, because I can't tell you like the, was it 20, yeah, it was 2018 when Liz had that iconic shot of her filing her nails. And I was <laughs> like, you know, and then we all think about it. It's so funny because then, you know, when I, I wore that shirt to, um, to uh, the 2018 All-Star Weekend, 
And she was like, I have got to get this shirt. I mean, she just thought it was so, but I in my mind, I was like, and it was a, I don't know who the photographer was, I just know. He worked for the Dallas Morning News, but I just remember thinking to myself, we need more of these moments, you know, photographed and appreciated. I mean, it's one thing to have them photographed, to have them appreciated for what they truly are, because a lot of people will take that photo and turn it, possibly turn it into a negative thing where we're looking at it from a perspective of we know this athlete, so we know the context of it. Um, you know, speaking of athletes, when you think about your shoot, your style of shooting, name an athlete, if you can even think of to do this, name an athlete in the, in the league who... Um, who would best describe your shooting style? Mm, that's tricky. Mm, <laughs> I knew this was going to take a minute. It's cool. <laughs> I would probably it. say Ariel Powers. Oh. That's a good one. Yeah. 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 Like, after now being, like, around her, too, and getting to know her just a little bit and seeing, like, kind of, like, the fire that she has. And, like, she's a super playful, like, energetic person. But when she's, like, in her zone, like, she's so tenacious. Like, you wouldn't think that her personality would be what it is. Like, that's how I am as a person. But also, that's kind of how I shoot. Like, when I'm shooting, I'm not really engaging with a lot of other people. I'm kind of just laser focused on what I'm trying to do. And usually, I have, like, this stale face. And people feel like they can't talk to me. And then when I come out, it's like, oh, no, you're pretty cool. Like, you're pretty chill and dope. So, I would say Ariel Powers. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Uh, I think I'm gonna go with Kayla Thornton, and yeah. Kayla is a bulldog, right? She has that bulldog mentality. She is a bulldog, and I think that like the thing with her is like she comes with it. She's aggressive. Like I'm very aggressive when it comes to getting interviews and getting the photos, like certain kind of photos I want. Like I'll tell the player, like, hey, when they sit down on the bench before the game, I'll be like, sit right there. I need to take a picture of this shoe, and then they'll be looking at me like. Oh, okay, and I'm really intense when it comes to that. So I agree with. I like the Ariel Powers one. That's that's a good one. But yeah, Kayla, I, Kayla has that certain thing. If you watch Kayla Thornton play, you know she's tenacious. Like she's very competitive, and like that's kind of like how I am when it comes to like getting the sneaker interviews, trying to get the kicks out before. Because a lot of people don't understand this. The W has the luxury of um, getting like new shoes being seen before they get out in public. Like the like I tell people all the time. The one thing that I hated was when Skylar Diggins first signed the Puma. She was one of the first ones to wear the, the Puma Clyde. Yeah. That shoe had never been displayed anywhere. Yes. But if you look at the consensus, it's always being told that the NBA guys were the first one. But yeah. the, WNBA, the WNBA made a rule to where you couldn't wear anything outside of Nike. And it was unfortunate because that should have been Skylar's moment. And I thought that, like, that was tough. But, yeah, I – but back to the whole comparison thing, I think I would say, yeah, Kayla Thorne. Because like I said, Kayla's game is crazy to me. Like, I just think that, like, she's very intense and, like, she's a bulldog. And for somebody that you probably don't hear every day on the national media side, like, if you ever watch her play, she's she's really, really good. And I think that, like, she's getting better and better by the years. And that's how I kind of compare myself because, like, she goes, she, she needs that rebound, she's going to go get it. I've seen her go – I remember – it's not funny, but, like, the fight. I don't know if you guys remember the fight. When um the, the wings and the, the Mercury hat, right? And Brittany Griner is up there and all that. <laughs> out of everybody that you thought was standing in the way, here comes old short Kayla throwing out of nowhere. And I'm like, whoa. And, and Kayla's just so intense, man. But she's such a sweetheart, though. So yeah. shout out to Kayla Thorne, man. But yeah, I would say Kayla Thorne for me. All right. I like these. These are good. Um, I was going to say Chai Young, but I think okay. right now I'm at like Kelsey Plum. So, like, uh, I think I've, like, developed a shooting style outside of sports. Like, I walk a lot and take a lot of pictures of buildings and shit I see outside. But, like, I'm kind of new uh, to sports photography. So, on that, I would probably go Kelsey Plum. Like, if I'm shooting a game where I feel like I'm in a zone, I get a lot of good shots. And then sometimes I get, like, one or two good ones. And I think, like, Kelsey Plum – Obviously, she's still, like, finding her way in the league. Like, she's obviously a bucket, but um, her college career, like, just going crazy, and now she's trying to adjust. So, and then I would say I'm probably trying to get eventually to tie in. Like, I, I'm kind of the opposite of what you were saying. Like, I'm very shy when I shoot. Like, I don't ask people for anything because I'm just, like, 
feel like I haven't really established myself like that yet. So kind of low key, but coming off the bench and eventually I'd like to be like Chai Young status where still like very well respected, but like more low key under the radar, I guess. To me, that's, that's, I love going to the games and saying that because like, I think that that's a lost art as well. Uh, the connections are always there. And I think that it's, it's a good competitive thing to have. I mean, like, man, day, man, you got to stay on your toes in the WNBA because you can miss a story. You know, I look at you, I mean, Minx does her thing, um, you know, Dorothy Gentry, you know, all these, you know, writers and stuff. And, and st I look at them, I'm like, man, this is amazing how they consistently do it. And they're on it. Like, I, sometimes I think I'm, like, overkill. And I look up, they're doing more. And I'm like, okay, I got to do more now. So I just like the grind that the ladies bring. And I think it shows on and off the court. For both sides, you know, players and journalists. So I think that's dope that y'all are able to do that. I think going off what you said, like the community in the W is amazing. Like I prefer to shoot WNBA games over NBA games. Like you said, like I've only shot a couple NBA games, but um, WNBA games, they give me a spot to sit on the court through yeah. the game. Like NBA, I can only shoot warm ups and like I feel like I'm actually doing work that's like yes. helping because like NBA these guys get so much coverage like everyone's story has been told like you said like yeah. bench end of the bench like you know their stories but WNBA there's so much more that's been untapped and like there's no competition and like working in the sports world where I'm like basically the only woman covering yeah. men's sports like being able to be around like female athletes and then female coaches and like female PR people um, and such a community like you can speak to that there doesn't there there isn't much competition everyone's just trying to lift each other up for sure for sure I mean that that's I think that's the beauty of why um, I think it's a beauty of what makes it so easy to cover the league um, at the same time because Especially if you have the right people in the right places, it makes it your job that much easier to do. Um, there, I mean, I'm not gonna lie. There's still some complaints that I have sometimes in terms of accessibility. I mean, I just can't. This is one of the reasons why I was telling Chris earlier that, like, you know, I know with some people when they're trying to get their foot in the door, especially when they're really dope. Like, if I see you are a young, up and coming sports photographer. I definitely want to help you in any way I can and let you know, hey, like if you're interested in you know coming to a game, let me know and I'll, you know, put you out there because, you know, I'm always, even with the artists, like I'm starting to know there's this artist niche within the W now that's starting to like come up that's really kind of been just sitting there and I don't think people have really been giving them their shine for a minute. Um, and I'm noticing these, like, and again, because the W gets treated like a niche sometimes, you kind of get stuck. People get stuck in a niche mentality. So it makes it very difficult to move around sometimes. But at the same time, if you're working with the right people, like you said, with Sterling, Sterling's a great example of that. He's terrific mm -hmm. to work with, you know, easy to communicate with, and uh, understands what our vision is long term for what we're trying to do. Yeah, yeah, and and I got a couple of guys that, you know, like a couple of PR people that I definitely work with a lot. Um, Eli from the Sparks is really good. Yeah. Eli, is, Eli is definitely uh, one of my favorites. I, I remember um, Eli tweeted out something very important. He said, we need more journalists to cover the WNBA. And I agree. Um, and, you know, there's a couple more. I know Minnesota has a PR. He shout actually out, covers, Shout out Aaron yeah. Freeman. Yeah. yeah. I think he actually covers the the NBA version of the Minnesota Timberwolves. And I see him a lot. And it's kind of fun because, like, when he sees me, we're like, I, I forget sometimes. I black out. Like, oh, I ask me, hey, I need to get Sylvia Fowles. And I'm at the Timberwolves game. I'm like, I keep forgetting. And I just feel like, man, where's the NBA right now? He said, you know how it goes. And <laughs> it's dope, man. Like, I agree with you on the accessibility part, which I know that's more that we can bring on that. But the WNBA, is, I hated that the fact that maybe it is a starter, like, for a lot of media people because I think that, like, it shouldn't be – a starter thing because I think it's a big deal as well. I just think that like you have to get the community to embrace it. And I think that once the WNBA understands like what they can do to make people embrace it, like a lot of people who like the NBA don't like the NBA because of basketball. They like sneakers. They like video games. And once the WNBA gets into that appeal side more, they're doing the sneakers thing. I think that when we start getting more, you know, you know, ladies that have like their own signature piece outside of Tarazi and a few others, I think yeah. that that will be the 
that's going to be a big deal. But like I said, when you have like, you know, photographers like like these ladies here, I mean, they're getting dope shots and like, it's hard to compete, man, because like at the end of the day, like I'm like sitting there I'm like, man, how did they get this shot of this shield? I couldn't get this shot. <laughs> like, half the time, I'm so caught up in talking to them, but I just right, think right. <laughs> Yeah, no, I feel you. <laughs>